Okay, I know one of you asked me about in painting and what is in painting and what could be an application of in painting. In painting is an application on its own. You have an image and you want to fill in the missing parts. Can you actually lose it, use this framework to learn features? Like what you were doing with uh, BERT, you were masking some part of your input and you, you were requesting your neural network, your transformer to give you the masked words. Can you do the same thing here? Can you mask a bunch of pixels? So this is the part that is missing. And if you ask a human to imagine what's happening in this box, they are gonna be able to do it if they are good artists. If you ask, uh, if you try to solve the same problem using an L2 loss, you're gonna get some blurry outputs. If you add adversarial loss, you're gonna get some imagined uh, fine details in that box. And remember, this is, a, this is an ill-posed problem. There is no correct answer to this. You, if you give this to another human, you're gonna draw something else, okay? And this is a one-to-many mapping again. These are ill-posed problems. What are we gonna do? You take your, the context of your image, this is a context, this is the missing part, and your task is to predict the missing part. You're gonna put a neural network, an encoder, that is gonna take this image, the context is 227 by 227 by three channels, red, green, blue, that's your image. It's gonna push it through some AlexNet. AlexNet is the paper that started deep learning as we know it today. It's a paper written in 2012. And you're gonna take that, the structure you keep, but the parameters you're gonna train from scratch. And you keep five layers of your AlexNet. And after that operation, an image goes in, another image is gonna come out. It's gonna have a lower resolution, but it's gonna have more channels. And now you're here. One idea is to flatten this. It's gonna give you a vector that is 9,216 dimensional. And then you can put a fully connected network here, but then it's gonna be a lot of parameters. Rather than doing that, you're gonna do it channel-wise. You're gonna do it 256 times. So you have M features, M is 256. These are N by N, six by six. This is your input, that's your output. You want it to have the same shape. Now you're defining this operation here. You're gonna do it channel-wise. You're gonna do a for loop here on your number of channels. If this is, if M is 256, you're gonna have a for loop that is a size of 256. And then you're gonna do matrix vector multiplications. Each pixel is a vector. Actually, each channel is gonna give you a vector that is 36. This is N squared. You're gonna have a matrix that is N squared by N squared, and that's gonna give you an output vector per each channel. How did you reduce the cost, the number of parameters? This is gonna be M because you have a for loop here, and then you're gonna have two for loops here. That's gonna give you N to the power four. If you want it to, if you want to flatten everything and then multiply by a matrix of proper size, you're gonna get this many parameters. So you're saving an order of M parameters. Your decoder, so now we are here, we want to decode. You're gonna have five upconvolutional layers. So up convolution uh, is uh, very similar to fractional, but it's different. It's very similar to fractional you tried it, but it is slightly different. Uh, but here, the aim is to look at the loss. So somehow you go back to the resolution of your image. What is your loss function? You take your ground truth image, you have your encoder. This is basically the entire thing. That's your context encoder. That's your F function. If you take an image, you push it through F, you're gonna get another image. That's your output image. You have your mask. It's a binary mask. And this corresponds to where you are dropping. You have a one value if you're dropping a pixel and you have a zero value if you're keeping that pixel. So this is gonna be one here and it's gonna be zero here. You are gonna have a reconstruction loss. You take X, your input image, and you mask it. If M hat is one, one minus M hat is gonna be zero. So you're zeroing out that portion of your image first. You push it through your neural network. You compare it to the original image, but then you are not interested in all of your image. You're interested in only in that portion that you masked out. That's why you're gonna multiply by M hat. So M hat is gonna be one. 
in this box and it's gonna be zero everywhere else. So you are dropping the context. So first you are keeping the context. Here you are dropping the context and that's L2 norm. And that is what is giving you this image that is blurry. You can do generative adversarial neural network. You take an image, you mask it, you push it through your F. F is now your generator. And then you discriminate between the generated image and the original image. That's gonna give you your adversarial loss. You can combine the two with some properly chosen hyperparameters. Now you can do cool stuff like this. You can fill in the details. This is in painting. So this part was missing, you are putting it back. You can use the features that you learned out of this method uh, to do all sorts of things like classification, etc. But how do you measure the quality of such a task? There is the signal to noise ratio. You can also look at mean L2 loss, mean L1 loss, et cetera. You can look at the features and see what part of the features are closer. Basically, you take a context like this, that's going to give you a vector. And then that vector, you're going to find its closest neighbors in your data set. So these are the closest neighbors out of this method. All of them belong to the faces of dogs. If you use histogram of oriented gradients, don't worry about that. That's a classical machine, machine learning technique, actually featureizing images technique. These are not gonna be images of dog. And if you use AlexNet, which is not a generative model, it's a discriminative model. Some of them are faces of dogs and some of them are birds. And as I mentioned, this is gonna help you learn some features. And those features, you can use them to do classification, detection, segmentation. And actually, they are not doing that bad, those features, in a fraction of the pre-training time than competing methods. So this is a BERT-like method for images. I think I'm going to stop here. And uh, for those of you who have questions, I'll be around. And for those of you who want to leave, you can leave. I had a question about this um, sure. adversarial loss. Uh, in this case, we're just looking at a discriminator. We're not looking at any sort of generator. And yes, we're just trying are. to, we are. Because we're generating generator. it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You take and this. so we just, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So yeah, you take this image that is covered, that is masked, and then you want to generate the part that is in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's your F. F is going to be your generator. Okay. And we just want to be able to correctly we want to maximize over D. So we're trying to correctly identify that as fake when we in-paint? Yes. So your discriminator wants to discriminate between the fake and real. And then your generator wants the images that is generate that it is generating to look as real as possible. So F has two objectives. One is to fool the discriminator and the other one is to do a good job at reconstructing. Okay, yeah. But at the same time that it's trying to reconstruct, it wants to make the images look more real. Okay, yeah. So you don't sense. want to imagine unrealistic stuff here. You want it to look real. At the same time, you don't want it to be blurry. Because you could have a smaller L2 loss, even if it doesn't necessarily look that good. Yes, and that's why I didn't emphasize that much on these scores, because they are highly correlated with L2 loss. Mm -hmm. Maybe this score plus the inception score would have been a better score to evaluate this method. Okay? Yeah, thanks. Sure. Any other questions?